Hey guys, what's up? This is Stock Retail coming back to you. Uh, it's been a minute since I've had any videos I've been publishing. Uh, I guess there's a few reasons for that. One is I've been real busy uh, traveling, a uh, little bit of travel for uh, some family reasons, um, and then <clears throat> just been real busy with work as well. But today, obviously, we saw some fairly big news um, on the Antara purchase. There's an 8K that got published if you haven't seen that yet. Um, so I wanted to do a little DD and just dig in. I wanted to see that for myself, and then I thought, well, if I'm looking at it, I may as well share what I see. Uh, so we'll try, as usual, to share um, hard DD with, along with a little bit of point of view. Where I'm sharing just my own opinion or point of view, then um, you know I'll try to make that clear. Um, before we get into this, you know, as always, uh, I say no trust, no trust me, bros, around here. Do your own DD. You need to dig in. You know, there's always a chance even. Um, I can be, you know, have the best intent and the, and the highest integrity and I could still get something wrong. So you need to do DD, you need to look at things for yourself. Um, you know, maybe I can lay breadcrumbs or point in a direction, but always best if you learn how to do your own research. And I'll kind of tell you where I get some of these things so that you can practice that. Um, in the meantime, you know, I, I mentioned I haven't made any videos in a while. I'll put some more content out soon because I've got some things on my mind um, in terms of well, one is just kind of an inspirational video that I have in my head uh, just to talk through some things that I think would be encouraging for us and that help us get focused uh, in light of the insane amount of FUD that's been ramping up. Um, what's more is um, just kind of putting our eyes on things that I think um, are reasons that I, they give me a lot of conviction. Um, so, for example... I want to do another video on, on just the state of the industry and the movies that are coming and how Q2 and Q3 look and how Q1 is tracking. And, uh, you know, the more that you look at um, the list of movies coming, the forecasts against those, and understand the continued recovery of this industry and this company, um, then I think that's a much more real metric personally than daily price action. You know, I, I think sometimes we, you know, we readily believe and admit um, and in some cases feel like we can prove that there's stock market manipulation. And then we turn around and we use the daily price action as some kind of sign of our strength. Well, why would we use a manipulated metric? If you believe the stock market's manipulated, then you turn around and say, oh man, we had a red day, we're losing. Uh, those two things kind of, I hope you can kind of see the contradiction there. That's, that's sort of a problem to say, uh, I'm using a metric that I believe someone else can manipulate to tell me how I should feel about how we're doing. Well, of course they're going to use that against you. So, I don't know, just something for consideration. So that's why I like to look at the industry itself. And then the other thing is, um, you know, some people say, oh, you're too focused on fundamentals. But, you know, I've said in another video how I believe it's the fundamentals and the turnaround story of this company that will in turn actually kind of force the squeeze itself. So, um, you know, go look at that. But that's why I talk about that. But today, obviously, we got this news on Antara, and I have no doubt that Negative players will attempt to spin this, and so rather than spin, I suggest we look at what's actually in it. So let's do that. Um, first off, if you go to the SEC Edgar site, you can find this filing for yourself. I, I recommend doing that. Take a look at it so that, again, you're not taking my word for anything, but I will show you screenshots here. So um, as always, you can kind of pause and, and take a look at those screenshots for yourself. Um, but yeah, I recommend that you go look at the filing. So what happened for me is, you know, after hours, I saw that uh, Ape took quite the dip. I'm going to talk about my point of view on why that might have been as well. Uh, just trying to explain that to myself, and perhaps it, it explains it for others. And so I saw the dip, and I'm thinking, well, there has to be news. So I just went straight to the SEC side and sure enough found the filing. So let's, let's just talk through that. The first thing is a reminder that this actually just completes something called the forward purchase agreement. So we go all the way back before the holidays. Um, I also did a video on this back then where I walked through the math of the Antara deal. There were three tranches or three buckets, if you will, <clears throat> of this purchase deal with Antara. Um, and I'm going to show you that here in a minute. But so this is the one bucket that really hadn't completed yet. And what really happened is Antara said, OK, AMC, there's a kind of a series of boxes you need to check. If you get all the boxes checked in time, then we'll finish this deal. And that was that forward purchase agreement. So, you know, back in December, they were looking forward till now and saying, we'll purchase this as long as you check the boxes. And today is the filing that says, okay, they check the boxes, the deal goes through. But then there's some new language around it too that we need to talk through. <clears throat> okay, so first off, the forward agreement um, and, and the filing telling us that that's what happened today. 
Uh, so you can see the screenshot at the bottom or here I'm going to highlight for you what those three buckets or those three tranches were from the entire deal. Um, the one on the top is the one that got completed today. Then these other two at the bottom um, are what happened before. So today is about 107 million apes. You can see the 106.6 that was effectively for $75 million. Uh, that was about 70.5 cents uh, a share. Now, remember, that got executed when Ape was down at like 66, 67 cents a share. So at that time, Antara was saying, yep, we'll pay more than even what it is in the market. Uh, but we don't want to finish this until, you know, you get the conversion vote out there and all of that kind of language. Um, so today, they went ahead and completed the rest of that deal. The other two things that happened in December, so you can see AMC had uh, bought back, or, or you can say paid off, $100 million of debt. And that was this 10 um, slash 12% kind of toggle second lien um, that's due in 2026. So they had paid $100 million of debt off. That was for 91 million APE, you can see. So that's $1.10 a share. Also when it was kind of that 66, 67 cents. Um, keynote there, uh, a couple things actually. So first off, they paid that debt down at a discount. Um, and then what's more is... Um, you have to think when they pay down debt, remember they're making interest payments on that. So any debt you wipe off the books, you've also now wiped off your interest payments um, off the books. That debt wasn't due till 2026. So while I'm showing you here that that was for a dollar and 10 cents a share, you would actually wanna then include, so if there's basically four years of interest payments they saved on that, let's call that like $11 million a year. So you need to include the value of this sort of like 40 to $44 million of interest payments they're now never going to have to pay. And if you kind of included that, then you see how actually the value of this ape was a lot more than just this $100 million. It was also the other, say, $40 million of interest payments that they're now not going to have to pay over those four years. And then you'll see that show up in the earnings. So every time they don't have an interest payment, that's a reduction in expense. So think about an income statement when we get the earnings release. So if you bring that expense line down, you're keeping more cash in your pocket and the overall earnings now looks better. Any savings on expenses goes straight to the bottom line. Um, so that's pretty cool. So, and then we're gonna talk in a minute as well. There's more announcement about debt today and more, more debt being paid off, uh, but we'll get to that in a second. And then the other bucket was AMC had sold another 60 million to Antara uh, at the market uh, in mid-December. So if you look across these, it's about 257.7 million, I believe, that Antara bought. So let's just round up, kind of call that about 260 million shares. That's going to matter here in a minute. So I mentioned AMC also in this filing today, here's the screenshot of that, announced uh, it's paid off more debt. Um, and you can see, first off, since the beginning of 2022, AMC has now paid off $365 million of debt. Um, that's a debt reduction over the last year. And uh, here I want to really address... I've had a couple videos where I say, you know, why I'm a yes vote on the conversion, how that um, would enable Adam to have, uh, let's say, more valuable access to capital, less dilutive access to capital, um, and how that would enable him to pay down debt um, cheaper, let's say. And then I get trolled. People say, well, when has he ever said he's going to use it for that? How's he, you know, tell me he's, you know, quote him, where's he said he's going to pay down debt? And to that, I would just say, this is the scoreboard, you know? Someone sometimes uh, trolls you. I used to play basketball. I'll just point up and say scoreboard. Um, he has paid off $365 million of debt over the last year. If you use kind of the aggregate or sort of like weighted average interest rate they have on all of their current debt, I'm coming up to a number of around $25 million a year of debt savings. Um, so that's, remember I just said that goes straight to the bottom line. That's interest that is now not going out the door or think of that as cash they get to keep now. And actually, it's it's really probably higher than that $25 million. I'm just trying to give you a conservative number. Uh, I think if you watch this channel a minute, you know, I like to avoid any kind of exaggeration. But in truth, I believe they've saved um, more interest payments than that. I'd have to go back and really calculate it all out. Um, I've got that kind of in a local spreadsheet. But I just want to round for now and say, there, let's say since the beginning of 2022, they've reduced their interest payments by something like $25 million a year. It's significant. Um, and so you can see today, the announcement was, now I'm at the bottom of this screen, they paid off another $85 million of debt. Note that discount. So they got almost a 50% discount. They got almost half off on paying down $85 million of debt. Um, that comes because sometimes if you're the debt holder, um, you're the loaning institution, 
maybe there's a reason you'd really like to have some more cash right now. And now think about our macroeconomic environment. There are some people who probably would like to have cash. So Adam's able to go to them and say, you know what, I've got some cash right now. Um, I'll pay down my debt. You can have this cash, but you give me a discount. And so that's great news for us stockholders because um, in a way that is immediate contribution uh, basically to the company's results. So it's a, it's a fix to the balance sheet where he reduces this $85 million, sweeps it off the balance sheet, but did it at a discounted cost. Um, so kind of makes you healthier quicker. And, and that's great news. We got savings. Uh, okay, so you can see what, what um, are some pieces of this. They gave a few specifics. There's this basically $57 million more of this second lien that's due in 2026. Um, and so you can kind of you know, math out what the interest savings is on that, but I've kind of included that at the top. And then another $4 million paid on the senior subordinated note that's also due 2026. So uh, just continued debt pay down and uh, you know, to the trolls, again, scoreboard. He's paid almost $400 million in debt off in just the last year. Uh, so there is a, some language in the filing about unlocking. So if you remember back to the original filing before the holidays, um, and I talked through that in, in that video, uh, kind of on the vote itself and the conversion that's from before the holidays, the AMC was locked into not being able to sell more than $40 million worth of APE since December 22nd, or maybe it was the 21st. And Antara was kind of locked into holding their shares for a certain amount of time. So you can see now, They've sort of tweaked it a little bit where Antara can now sell up to 26 million shares. Um, but you notice that's not the entire, so I just told you they bought almost 20, uh, 260 million shares. So it's 26 of that that there is unlocked that they can sell. And then AMC is allowed to sell not more than $140 million of APE. Now remember, if there's a yes vote on the conversion, APE goes away here in a few weeks, March 14th. Uh, so in theory, from now to March 14th, Antara has unlocked their ability to sell $140 million worth of ape. Uh, I want to talk through in, the, in a minute why, you know, if I was in charge, if I was Adam, I don't think I'd be doing that. But they do have unlocked the ability to do that. So that, that's just in the language here. And I'll, I'll, I'll get to the opinion piece in a minute. For now, let's stick to facts. Uh, okay, so then the other part of, of this agreement today or this um completion of the forward agreement, then some new language added. You can see from now till March 31st, it says AMC will not issue or exchange more common shares. I've, I've highlighted common there for, with, for a reason, um, without Antara approval. So the deal says AMC can issue $140 million of APE. Remember, APE is a preferred equity unit that represents a piece of a preferred equity share. Um, but common shares is AMC. And interesting that it's not till 3.31. So the conversion vote is 3.14. APE is done trading 3.14. But they've given themselves another 17 days after that. Antara has said, okay, AMC, you're locked into, you're not selling anymore um, until after. So let's summarize this and let's talk about this after hours action. And I'll, then I'll kind of get into some opinions here. First of all, this is not new. So I mentioned this is part of the forward agreement. It's just completing and saying, okay, the boxes were checked and we'll finish the rest of the deal that we agreed on back um, like December 22nd. Second, you saw that there's more debt paid down, um, almost 100 million more debt uh, paid down. Antara can sell 10%, so that's that unlock of 26 million. So that's 10% of what they bought. Um, and then AMC won't issue more common shares. Pardon me, I should have said here. Um, won't issue more common shares from now until March 31st unless they get consent. So let's just think through logically a couple things. First off, if you're Antara and you get permission to sell up to 26 million shares, if you think there's a yes vote coming and APE is going to convert into AMC, then you believe APE is going to increase in its value. If I was the owner of 26 million shares that I'm allowed to sell. I'm not selling them today in the mid twos if I think it's going to convert to something, you know, in the fives or sixes or sevens or whatever AMC is going to be at, you know, come mid-March. So that's one thing. Same goes for AMC. If they have permission to sell $140 million of APE, you know, let's say that's like 60 million shares or something. Uh, I'll just use whatever the price is right now as of after hours when you're watching this or whatever day you're watching this, 
uh, you know, just divide that $140 million by the ape price. Well, okay, so like here, I'm pulling up my phone, I'm looking, uh, we're at 249 right now as I record this after hours. Well, if I believe there's a yes vote, and I, you know, look at all my other videos um, on the vote itself, and my whole argument on why I'm a yes vote is it's far less dilutive to wait till after the conversion and have a much more valuable um, security to sell for your cash, and you will have to sell less of it um, than if you sell it now. So if I sell now, I'm selling Ape at, uh, as of this, literally this second, 249. Um, <clears throat> but maybe if I wait till after the conversion, I can sell AMC at, like I said, let's call it $5 or something, or $6, or whatever it's going to be at, pick your number. I would not be diluting now, and I would not feel super great as a leader. Um, now, I want to be real careful here. I think you guys are, you know super clearly that I have the utmost faith and trust in Adam, and I will just say explicitly, there are things that him and his leadership team know that I do not know. There might be the timing of cash needed for different investments, more debt pay down, whatever it is. Um, so I'm not presuming to say that if he sells any more ape right now, that that's somehow a terrible thing. I'm not saying that. Um, I'm just saying logically, I, I kind of don't think that I would do that. But again, he knows some things I don't know, and I trust him. So why, why do I bring up that logic, though, for both Antara and for AMC? So while they've, they've, they've unhandcuffed themselves for that $140 million for AMC or the $26 million shares for Antara, um, <clears throat> it doesn't mean they have to do that. So here's my thought on the after hours action. And now I'm really giving you opinion and speculation and um, I'm completely making this up as a point of view, okay? So you need to think through for yourself whether this makes sense to you, whether you agree with it. Uh, but, but here's my point of view. As soon as this announcement came out, you know, Wall Street does not like risk and risk actually gets priced into stocks. The more that Wall Street doesn't know um, whether an event will occur or not, even the possibility of that event is a risk. And so that just gets priced in. Think of like with insurance. You know, you pay premiums for a reason. That's because you're basically paying for risk. And the lower risk you are, like if you're a driver, then you pay a lower premium. Um, and so risk gets priced into financial instruments. Well, a stock is a financial instrument. And Wall Street does price in risk. So in theory, there is risk that we could wake up in the morning and find out Antara is selling 26 million shares. There is risk that Adam could dilute with $140 million of ape. You know, those are real things. Um, I've said why I logically, you know, I don't think that he would do that, but certainly he could. And the fact that he could means there's risk in the price. But what I want to just ask you to look at too is look at the volume of after hours and the volume of this dip. And you'll see this is not 26 million shares or, you know, in AMC's case, say 60 million shares. So between them, if it's like 80 to 90 million shares, and the after hours volume is in the thousands. You know, I'm looking at a bunch of candles here. The current candle we're on is 450 shares. Uh, the last candle before it, I'm looking at one minute candles. You know, there's like a 1,000 candle. There's a 20 shares. So here's a 2,000, 3,000. Th these are tiny volume. So, you know, even if you add up across the entire after hours right now, it is not big volume. So I have to believe one of two things. And, and honestly, probably a combination of both. One is you know, the Fudsters and the manipulators see a chance to kind of attack on news. Okay, some of us believe that's happened plenty before. It's possible. Um, and then the other is the market itself basically priced in some risk of dilution and of sale pressure for Mantar. And so I, if you ask me, I would just guess that it's those two things. But also, <clears throat> neither of those two things is any real change to that underlying business fundamental value, which is what I started off with saying, hey, pretty soon here I'm going to make another video talking about the industry, talking about the financials of AMC itself, reminding us why <clears throat> it's actually clear in the financials that AMC's underlying business is stronger now than pre-COVID. And I know that might sound wild, but I mean, I can show it. You know, I use rent as one of the examples. I can show you how they're paying less rent now than they paid pre-COVID. I can show you how they're giving less of a percent of their revenue to the studios than they did pre-COVID. Um, and there's a whole lot of other things we'll go through sometime. <clears throat> but so if, if nothing has changed in this announcement about the fact that the industry is recovering, the fact that more movies are coming, the fact that AMC's fundamentals are improving, and not only that, but I get to see here, oh, he paid off another $85 million of debt. To me, 
I guess I ask myself, does that actually represent um, some value in APE? And so <clears throat> I can never offer advice. First of all, I'm not a financial advisor. Second of all, I can't take responsibility for what happens to your portfolio. So you're going to have to decide for yourself what's right. You need to do your own DD. But I'm looking at this and I'm saying, so my reaction is, if I believe there's a yes vote coming on APE, converting to AMC, then, I don't know, this dip, this dip doesn't spook me at all, and, and I, I just almost ignore it. You know, so you got to decide what you feel about that and whether you think the conversion's a yes vote or not. I'm not going to go into, you know, all the reasons why I think it should be. You know, I've, I've kind of committed to just sharing my point of view and moving on, which is what I've done. Um, I've got enough videos on the vote. If you want to see why I think a certain way, you can go see those. Uh, but if you think there's going to be the conversion, my point is, then this dip feels like value to me. But again, you've got to do your own DD on that. Uh, you know, and as always, I just focus on um, if this industry is turning around, and you can easily prove it is, you can just look at the slate of movies coming out. Um, how big those are, what the industry forecast is against those, just the fact that it's even more movies than last year, the fact that this quarter is currently tracking about 50% ahead of last year at the same same quarter, same date, um, and what's coming in Q2 and Q3 and what's coming in 2024 and all of that. So if the industry is turning around, if AMC is improving its fundamentals and, and paid down even more debt now, um, if I believe in the apes, which I do, if I believe in this leadership team, which I do, then all of this stuff is noise until the squeeze. Like, I, I can wait. So to me, I just return back to, to sort of logic, data, DD, and ultimately the thesis, which is I believe this company is not going bankrupt. Um, and, you know, I'll continue to show DD on why I believe that. You need to do your own DD, as I always say, and decide that for yourself. But meantime, as I always say, let's go.